Hello Mudishi, welcome to this new video. How are you? Today I want to show you to continue our uh, analysis of Fisher's Peludian Fugue because they are, there are a, a very interesting things in this fugue, in D major, especially about the Fa Super La. So, concerning solmization from the Renaissance origin to the, then the Baroque period with the hexachordal solfeggio. We have the Prelude and the Fugue, let's start with the Prelude. Preludium. We are in D major, so let's start playing the piece and then let's delve into the analysis. Wonderful. So this is a prelude mainly for the organ. So there are some changes we have to do if we play it, it on the harpsichord. Especially here we have a lot of pedals at the beginning on D, then E at the end, A before D again. So how to approach an analysis of these preludes? These preludes are composed of little sections. So we have the first section. Here, with the exordium. This is very interesting because it is a descending scale, reading with hexachordal solmization. La sol fa mi sol. La sol fa mi sol sol fa mi. Fa mi re do, fa mi sol do. And then again. So, la sol fa mi sol sol fa mi. Fa mi, fa mi, re, do, fa mi, sol, do. We have these two little phrases which create a, um, a phrase one bar long and each part is composed of tararatam, tarerratam, tararatam, tarerratam. This is very, a very common thing of Baroque period. When you have diminutions, it is more common to have a figuration of diminution which, which starts on the up, on not on the downbeat, but after the downbeat, and which finishes on a downbeat. When we talk about down, downbeats, we talk, we are talking about also even little downbeats. What do I mean? We can beat this bar as down and up this level, down, up. But each part can be beaten with up and down, up and down, each section. And at the same time, each section can then be beaten up and down, up and down. So you have to consider the um, value, okay? Because you can use both systems. For example, now we have a dissonance here. Uh, let's find uh, an example of the uh, where we have something like this on the double cadence at the end. I want to find a dissonance, for example, a 7, 6, here. Here we have this note, which is a, a third. And the resolution here happens after one, one quarter, so down, up, in this point. But if we check another section, for example, here, we have something different. The suspension and its resolution is on another level. Up, down, up is on the eight note level. You can download the, the analysis uh, with the notes. Here is the, there is a link on uh, of the post on Patreon where you can download the analysis so you can see all these notes. Here the level of the dissonance is on the, on the eight notes. While here, the level of the dissonance is on the quarter note. So this is important. 
Now, the choice of when to use one and when to use the other one, uh, it depends on the cost, context and compositional purposes in this style. We are not in Renaissance music where we are not so much free, we have not so, so uh, we have not this big freedom as in Baroque music. So we have the first phrase, and it is very important to be aware of the phrases and on the, of the words, because when I teach composition, partimento, improvisation, what is the main lack of uh, almost all the people is that they maybe are good in, in harmony. They have already made har studies on harmony, but they do not think in terms of phrases. The music is made of music is made of melodies. Okay, we have harmony, but are the melodies that you remember? Also in Bach, in counterpoint, they, they are there are melodies. So be aware of where you have melodies. And bar number two is a repetition of bar number one, as you can see. So of course you do not you do not have to play. No, but sing to this. We have something different but ascending, compensating the descent. So down in terms of rhetorical aspects, down and then up. Do re mi fa sol la fa la. This is the hexachord. Do re mi fa sol la fa la. This is the hexachord. On a ut here. La fa la. Do re mi fa sol re mi fa. Repeated. Do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, fa, la. We, we, this would be very high, so instead of this, we have something different. La, sol, fa, mi, sol, mi, sol, do. La, sol, fa, mi, la, sol, fa. So all these gestures, as you can see, gestures take the minimum value, the value of the half note. And finally, after all these things, we have a new section, which is over degree 2, becoming uh, the preparation for the fifth degree. So, the first section of this prelude finishes here. Let's play the first section. Now a new section begins, which is more contrapunta, as you can see. And we start to have two melodies at the same time. La sol fa mi. Six. They are not the same notes, but they are. They have the same. Uh, uh, is an inversion of the rhythm. As a chiasmo, the cross, crossing inversion. And the figure arrives from the see you have at the beginning in terms of lips. Then we have the, a different harmony. Sol fa mi. But the lips are preserved. Modulation point. Here. Important imitation. Uh -huh. You 
Wanted. No. <laughs> you should hear. to parallel sixth and we can recognize here the last section starting with pa ta 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 the third section starts here This is a phrase where it's not important the melody itself, but the arriving point, the tension over this, to create the dissonance before the cadence, the final cadenza um, doppia, double cadence, which is here. They are two words, even in this case. So? Perfect. So here we have imitation. Re, mi, fa, sol. Re mi fa mi double cadence cadenza doppia and then the confirmation of the cadence with this passage sol la fa mi sol la fa mi this way As you can see, there are a lot of things that we can learn from just a little prelude like this. Let's play this prelude, uh, no, let's pass with the fugue. <laughs> you can play it by yourself. Now, what is interesting in the fugue? Let's play the fugue. Very interesting is the subject itself. Now, it's true that we do not have any clear indication, okay? We do not have a, a natural C, but in terms of hexachords, we are on G, on uh, A, which is 50 degree. Sol fa mi, sol mi la fa la sol fa mi re, sol la sol fa mi re do. Now let's look at the answer. The answer is the so-called 
tonal answer because he doesn't start on the on, on uh, exactly a fifth above but a fourth so so instead of sol mi sol mi which would be e see we have fa mi the mutazione the mutazione the mutation the mutazione is something very important uh, in solmization is the pass between one extra chord an extra chord and another one here the mutatio means the use of another syllable of the extra chord instead of the same syllables in the extra chord at the fifth degree so learning solmization is very useful for subjects in fugues too because you think to the same notes sol mi sol mi la re sol do sol sol mi Let's do another key, F major. Sol, mi, la, re, sol, do. And transposition becomes very easy. And when you have a mutation, you know it because instead of sol, you put fa, for example. Fa, mi. And fa, mi, then we have la in this point. We do not have a G sharp written. So if we are in a major, we would need the A sharp, a G sharp, to be coherent with the C sharp. So since we do not have our G sharp in the answer, may, may be understood this passage as a fa super la, okay? Uh, it may be you can play both, but it's more coherent, it's more correct to think of the fa super la, because it's something that they knew in their music theory and or better, in the theory of the practice of the music of that period. So the fa super la, in my opinion, is more important and correct in this style. Then, of course, the beautiful thing about music is that if you play something strange, if you do a mistake, you won't kill anymore, uh, anyone. If you are a medical doctor, uh, you are, you are uh, making a surgery <laughs> and you make a mistake, uh, it's, <laughs> it's dangerous for uh, uh, the patients. But in this case, we can do all the mistakes we want. No one will die. So, sol, mi. And as you can see, I've highlighted with red all the subjects and answers. So anytime we can see the theme, the main theme. And with the orange, the simple counter subject that we have in eight nodes. We do not have a, a clear counter subject, okay? A specific counter subject. But we have different melodies against the subject. Let's see all of them. And as you can see, the counterpoint of this fugue is very nice for all these colors. All these colors have a meaning. For example, let's start from, this, from the answer here. Now, the other voice takes, as you can see, the same melody. Sol, 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 fa. And this fa mi fa sol re mi fa is something we will find again in this composition. Now, what is this green element? This green element is the same thing of the orange one, but ascending instead of descending because we could. As you can see, continue the same la sol fa. This works, but this time is ascending to make variety to create counterpoint, and this is something we will find again. The green uh, part, as you can see. Over this, this beginning of the subject in the bass line, we have the double cadence, cadenza doppia. 3, 5, 4, 6, 4, 3, and then instead of 1, degree 3 because of the subject. Sol, mi, which is the alto cadence. Now, another thing. Um, Solmization is important, of course, but also composition is important. If you want to learn all the things about composition, improvisation in this style. Tell me, I'm, uh, I have specific paths um, focused on historical composition. You can find 
the, in, in any case, the, the, all the information here in the description. Then write to me, describe me your background, and then we, we, we can find the most uh, effective solution for your, for your single case in uh, this point of your life, according to your background, what you already know. So, write to me, then we have the double case, cadenza doppia. Subject in the melody sol 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 di la fa la sol sol. This time we have the descending orange. Now the ascending green line in the bass. Subject in the tenor. section because it's like a stretto of the ascending counter subject and then the subject in the baseline with another double cadence as we did before now we have a double cadence here This part is very interesting. I will personally tie this note this way. You can ask me why, because we have the same in the bass line here. So another example, another proof of how counterpoint in this composition, this fugue is very uh, deep. And we tie also because it's strange to repeat an eighth note. La, sol, fa, fa, mi, la. This has more sense sol, fa, fa, mi, la, as you can see. Fa, fa, mi, fa, re, mi, fa, sol, fa, mi, fa, re, mi, fa. Even if not modulating, we have the uh, little melody we found at the beginning, here, here, here now. Ti ri ta sol re mi fa Fa super la la fa la sol fa mi re sol 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 and the double case at the end set over the head of the subject sol 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 so we can as you can see, put the Fa Super La here, which implies C natural, and, and the bass line is just set an, an octave down with this loop. This way. Okay, now let's play this fugue for the last time.
this is a this are very short composition that if you play uh, liturgical services at the mass you can adapt in different parts of the uh, of the liturgy for example this can be good for an effort uh, for an offertory offert, offertorium how do you say in english offertorium offertorium offertory offertory and you can play the prelude or even or, or uh, the fugue alone or both together according to the um, length of the of each part and the fact that there are different fugues this one very short can be helpful to adapt these pieces to the situation so uh, let's continue our journey together analyzing these compositions and understanding the true art of composing and see you here for another video if you want to learn composition techniques <laughs> my lunch uh, write me an email, I'll be happy to learn more about your situation and tell you what's the best way to do in your specific case. Look at all these books! They are beautiful, each one more than the other and they contain a lot of information. But they have a big, big problem. Either you engage in a long, painful battle against the chapters to decipher, understand and interpret what's written, or they are completely worthless. Think about when you bought your last book to learn how to compose music. How enthusiastic were you? And then what actually happened? It stayed in your bookcase gathering dust and rusting away. What you need therefore is not one, five or ten more books. What you need is an experienced guide who takes care to evaluate your current situation, is well aware of what your desired destination is precisely because you tell him so he can design the best path for your journey points out the right exercises shows you which mistakes to correct and how to correct them and provides you with concrete tools to improve and get better step by step in recent years since I have been here on the web, I have had the pleasure of guiding by head many people like you to learn how to compose music, to grasp the musical techniques, discover the secrets of musical composition and then achieve concrete results. Because in the end, that's what matters, that everything you learn becomes a seed that grows your skills and little by little you become able to compose music. And so you are happy, and happy are the people with whom you share this passion, music. For this reason, in order to help you to achieve these destinations, I've prepared two paths. With some things in common, but different. One to become a Renaissance Musicus Practicus, and another one to become a Baroque Musicus Practicus. Are you curious to discover all the beautiful things you can learn with me? Click on this link and download the special informational brochure, which contains all the information you need to make the best choice for you.